Welcome back on lecture number five of module six on open source and private PGIS tools. In this lecture, before going experimenting a little mapping, we will review two types of GIS programs, online geographic databases available for free and GIS softwares. We will see various geographical databases, OpenStreetMap, which is an op Open Data Commons Open Database license, and Google Map, Google Map Maker and Google Earth, which are available for free, but their maps are in part privately owned. We will then also present briefly various softwares to be purchased and other free, as QGIS. OpenStreetMap is number one in providing free licensed geographical maps available for download and to be further used. They are moreover developed through crowdsourcing, like for Wikipedia. Volunteers all over the world contribute to developing and updating the map georeference information, like streets, borders, station or water course, providing maps continuous updates. You can browse and learn more about OpenStreetMap on its wiki page on the link on the slide. The specificity of OpenStreetMap is that the maps used are not privately owned by a company. OpenStreetMap is registered by the OpenStreetMap Foundation under Open Data Commons Open Database License. If you're curious about this type of license, you can find out more on the link on the slide. The OpenStreetMap Foundation, as a non-profit organization, gathers and provides support to maintain and develop OpenStreetMap. To know more about the Foundation and support the project, you can click on the link on the slide. OpenStreetMap, as it is clearly stated on its Wikipage homepage, was created in reaction and opposition to maps that are legally or technically restricting their free use. The beautifulness of OpenStreetMap also lies in its friendly user interface and the numerous information available to start using the map. We recommend, as a first step, you browse the wiki OpenStreetMap to find out many practical information on how to use OpenStreetMap. Also, if you are curious of a specific aspect, you can have a look at the OpenStreetMap packs. OpenStreetMap allows to download for free maps to be further used, so if you need a map, even of just a small area, you can select the area and download the map with the export modality. You can click on the export word on the slide to access the export mode. And if you want to contribute to the map development instead of, you, of the export mode, you can register to OpenStreetMap and you can click here on the link on the slide. Once activated your account, you can contribute to the map. Google Maps is the most used online free map. Each of us uses it probably weekly to get direction, to go to a meeting, when you drive, to find shops and activities. Google also uses it to sell to companies the possibility to appear in Google Maps and the possibility to use geographic information for any purpose. From Google Maps, Google developed an interface so that anyone can create its own map or can integrate elements to Google Map. That's Google Map Maker. If all can contribute, the ownership, though, remain of Google company and it's not possible to export the map and reuse it. The updates and modifications made by users in Google Map Maker are used by Google to improve Google Maps. Also, Google Maps Maker data can only be used exclusively in Google. In March, in next March, Google will finally fusion the function of Map Maker into Google Maps. We will get more into practice with the tutorial and the exercise at the end of this lecture, but you can already access Google Map Maker at the link here on the slide. So how OpenStreetMap is different from Google Maps? Google Maps is also for free, so where's the trick? It is in the ownership of the data used. Information in Google Maps are owned or by Google or by few of the main map companies. If you want to read more about why OpenStreetMap is different and should be used, you can click here on the link on the slide. So you would ask, why then having an exercise of Google Map Maker in this module? 
simply because it's the easiest tool for a very quick exercise. If you really want to develop bottom-up mapping activity for active citizenship, you shall definitely go for OpenStreetMap and using a free software to make your own map. To start using OpenStreetMap, you can read the beginner's guide here at the link on the slide. OpenStreetMap is number one in providing free licensed geographical maps available for download and to be further used. They are moreover developed through crowdsourcing, like for Wikipedia. Volunteers all over the world contribute to developing and updating the map georeference information, like streets, borders, station or water course, providing maps continuous updates. You can browse and learn more about OpenStreetMap on its wiki page on the link on the slide. The specificity of OpenStreetMap is that the maps used are not privately owned by a company. OpenStreetMap is registered by the OpenStreetMap Foundation under Open Data Commons Open Data Bed License. If you're curious about this type of license, you can find out more on the link on the slide. The OpenStreetMap Foundation, as a non-profit organization, gathers and provides support to maintain and develop OpenStreetMap. To know more about the Foundation and support the project, you can click on the link on the slide. Welcome back on lecture number 5 of model 6 on open source and private PGIS tools. We will now review softwares to be installed on computers to create maps. In those kind of applications, you can input the information you like and use them to create your own maps. Following Professor Lingua indications, the essential elements for geographic software are first of all the introduction and validation of data that has to deal with the management of different cartographic data and their validation through the examination of the default restrictions. It has to guarantee the digitation, automatic and semi-automatic vectorization and the overlapping of data in vectorial and rasters format. It also has to work as a data structurer, especially building topology links between ent entitles. It has to be able to acquire alphanumeric data and must have the functionality of validating the input data in terms of the coherence with the system, precision and update. For this reason, it's useful to consider the input of other data, like metadata, that simpli simply describe the first data input. Then there's the management of data, which consists in the definition of a data structure, for example, a hierarchy relation between data, memorized in the software. In this way, the user will be able to elaborate them easily. Then there's the diffusion of data and the representation of the results that are managed with programs that visualize partially or completely the base of data. They provide results of special analysis or simple interrogations that take the shape of graphics, tables or cartographic representations. Finally, the transformation of data involves three kinds of operation. First, the transformation necessary for the revision of errors and data updating. Second, the selection and research run on the base using the geometric entities or attributes links to them. And third, the complete analysis of data with the generation of data and the prospective of new data to input. A final essential element is the interaction with user that has to be smooth and constant in order to allow a better use and software understanding. On the market, there are different kinds of GIS softwares. They are usually distinguished in GIS high band, GIS middle band and GIS for desktop. The high-band GIS, like Small World, SRIARC, Info, Intergraph, MGA, own a complete range of functionalities and allow high-level elaborations, like the modeling of the ground level or the analysis of the matrix, and have to be used by highly qualified person. The middle-band GIS, like Autodesk, AutoCAD Map, Bentley Geo Geographic, 
Integraph GeoMedia Pro have better functionality levels than the desktop one. Even though they don't own the same functionality as the high-level ones, they are usually used by users which are not necessarily keen on the creation of geographic information. And finally, there's the desktop GIS like Autodesk World, Bentley Geo Outlook S3 Hark View, Integraph GeoMedia that allow the visualization, interrogation and execution of basis analysis. They are usually used by non-specialist users. The difference among them is in the product level that corresponds to a difference in the hardware available. The more the software is high level, the more the hardware available is bigger. Also, there's a difference in prices. Most programs are not free and they are developed by private companies. There are also open source software that allow to work in the desktop modality for free. The most used is probably Kuchis, Quantum GIS. Kuchis is a user-friendly open source geographic information system licensed under GNU General Public License by the Open Source Geospatial Foundation. GNU License is a copyleft free software license guaranteeing the freedom of end users in running, sharing and modifying the software. GQ's interface and its, and its functions, available in many languages, are similar to the commercial softwares. That is why it is probably the most used. You can visualize, manage, edit, analyze data and compose printable maps and it works on all kinds of systems, Linux, Mac, Windows, Android. Compared to other desktop GIS of the same level, Kujis has the smaller dimensions from 1.2 to 1.8 megabyte and needs less RAM to develop the same operations. Kujis invests, invites users to contribute in the form of code contributions, bug fixes, bug reports, contribute documentation, advocacy, so on and so forth. I invite you to discover more about Kujis on its website. You can find on the slide many useful links on which to click and discover more. You can take um, a tour of the Kujis features. You can check uh, map examples. You can also view study cases of application of Kujis to GIS work. And also you can access for free training materials how, on how to use Kujis in English, French and German. There are other software that provide open source services and allow to work with geographic information. Some going with the wall tools pack of a desktop GIS, other not. Here a sample of the most used. You can see the name of the software and they are hyperlinked to their website so you can find out more about them. Uh, moreover, paying um, softwares like ArcGIS for example uh, may consider the possibility to have a partial use of the software for uh, a specific duration of time. Now you will think what kind of information could be useful for the activities that you are about or you are already doing in the field practice together with DOR or BTA or Civitas or European Ratera Sud. What could you map that could be useful for your context analysis, for the contact with stakeholders, for the involvement, for the development of your proposal of project for the regeneration of a space, or for the space potential future use? It could be mapping local stakeholders, for example, local authorities, organizations, companies, specific population who might be interested in your project. It could be mapping services, social services, or services to vulnerable populations, environmental services, waste collection, education services, health services, transports, whatever. Also specific places or any kind of other human and natural activity. Then you decide on one or two indicators and gather data and try to develop a map following the indication of the tutorial. To give you an example, you could, for example, map social organization potentially interested in the project in a given neighborhood or in part of a neighborhood. Uh, it could be organization working with vulnerable population, with education, with environmental issues. There could be cultural organizations, elderly organization, trade unions, cooperatives, any sector you believe relevant. So the first step for you is to identify them and collect their names. 
and the second step is to collect their geographical information, their address, their geographic coordinates. And the third step is to prepare a small description of one or two sentences for each actor mapped. And the fourth is to build a Google Fusion table sheet followed the, following the same indication of the tutorial and finalizing the map. So please review now the document read this first for the complete indication on the exercise, in particular on issues of submission and support. Also see the document in format .csv, which is a draft of spreadsheet you can use to develop your map. On this slide you'll find a tutorial on how to create a Google Fusion table and spreadsheet. This will help you in the realization of the practical exercise foreseen in this model and explained in the indication card. Participants already trained on GIS are invited to provide whatever type of map they can create ad hoc and they are invited to share with the other participants from their country this specific competence for the benefit of their field practice.